Hello everyone and welcome back to Tashkin House. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad that you have stopped by. I am an interior designer who recently moved here to Albuquerque and we're in the process of building our personal home here. So if that interests you, please subscribe to the channel. I would love to have you guys here. Interior design is not the only thing that you will see on this channel because I love to cook, clean, organize, I love to get outside to do some gardening and anything that inspires me. So you'll definitely see lots of varieties on the Tashkin House platform. On my downtime, I love to go antiquing and on this special occasion, I ran into this vintage dresser that was built between the 1920s, 1930s era. And I knew it'll be the perfect piece of furniture to turn into a vanity for our powder room. It had the perfect height, the perfect width and depth. So if you're wanting to do a DIY project like I am doing, here are some things you want to consider. First, the height. You wanna make sure it's around 30 to 36 inches tall. You want the width to be the minimum of 24 inches and then you can go as wide as your space allows. And for your depth, you want it around 20 to 24 inches because you have to have play for that plumbing underneath. Today, I brought in a special guest, which is my main heartbeat, and that is my husband. And on his downtime, he loves to build pieces of furniture that I design or repurpose. In this week's video, you're gonna see him take the vintage dresser and convert it into the most exquisite, the most elegant, the most charming. No, let me stop. <laughs> but he's going to take the beautiful uh, vintage dresser and convert it into a vanity. And he's going to give you all the information that you need to know, also the tools he used. So if you're interested, please keep on watching. What brought me closer to the vintage dresser was the simple touches of detail. The four drawer chest with casters and a walnut finish grabbed all of my attention. When restoring this piece, paint was not even an option. I wanted to keep all the history alive. So we're just gonna punch a little hole through here. We're punching a couple of holes. Uh, turn this into the vanity in our powder room. So we'll do this, then we'll pull the back off and start doing some of that work. This is the easy part. Before I get all the way down in there, you might be saying, well, why is this taped? The tape will help, especially on a lot of your older furniture. Believe it or not, they did use quite a bit of veneers back then. That'll help the veneers from splitting and cracking, especially when you have a lot of seams. And it will also help with, uh, even if you have solid woods, it'll help it from splintering. I love to hear the sound of power tools. As you can see here, he is using a shop vac to help minimize the dust in the house. The top of the dresser has a veneer plywood, which was common for the era that this was made. I wanted to show you guys what it could look like if you decide to try this DIY project. Now that the holes for the plumbing fixtures are complete, my husband's doing a test fit to make sure the faucet will line up properly. Mm -hmm. 
Next up is our white vessel sink. Once again, he is making sure everything is aligned. My love is so amazing, especially with his craftsmanship. Everything is fitting perfectly right here. Not only is he making sure everything will fit without complications, he is also testing out the drain as well. y'all may have already seen we're converting a hundred year old dresser into our vanity for the powder room so one of the things to take into consideration when you do this is if you're doing it as a retrofit to something that's already existing or you're doing it for brand new construction make sure you take into consideration where the water disconnects are that you take your drain into consideration uh, codes vary state to state so work with your builder uh, the stuff's not already in place and then if it is already in place you can get the measurements yourself so what we're basically going to do here is modify the bottom two drawers uh, to allow for the drain to come down from the sink and for access to the to the plumbing for the guys when they're in there uh, hooking everything up so based on our design uh, with the vessel sink we're going to come in about 13 inches from the back we're going to give about a one foot space for uh, the hot and cold water valves and the, uh, the drain connection so they can get in there pretty easy. Which is in line with most of the prefab uh, vanities that you'll see in the store. Now most of those vanities you see in the store are going to be made of particle board. Uh, not necessarily the highest level of construction and you're going to be paying anywhere between $500 and $1000 for a 48 inch wide vanity. You can take the do-it-yourself route, which we'll have some more uh, upcoming videos on that. Or you can find an existing piece that maybe has some character or some history to it. You maybe have a family piece that you want to convert that has the right height and all that good stuff. And you can uh, add that in. But I'm trying to maintain as much of this original drawer as possible. So when we cut these pieces out of the back, I'll be reusing this wood. Uh, I'll fit it back in with another half inch ply something to match this uh, it'll be behind it obviously so it doesn't show so much we still want access to the drawers even though it's a, a powder room it's uh, you know toilet papers needed other necessities are needed in there so we still wanted to have storage in the drawers so I'll be reusing the hardware when I put this back back on that hole will already line up uh, same thing here it'll just move up here now there's not a whole lot of space here There'll still be ample storage on the sides once we get that done. As you can see here, he is finishing up the exterior outline. It has been measured. The next step is to start cutting. There are plenty of ways to cut your drawers right along with any tools you have. My husband decided to go with the Dremel tool. Make sure that you have a plan for your cost before you go all in. Once that is complete, he will swap his tool with a wider fitting to finish it off. As you can see here, he is now going in.
Now for the back of the drawer. This is a note I would like to share with you guys. First, my husband likes to do a shallow scoring cut before making a deeper cut. This piece is the cutout from the back of the drawer. As my husband noted, we wanted to use as much of the original wood as possible from the drawers on this project. So what we found when doing the drawer is that it wasn't lining up properly. And I was like, well, I know they didn't notch this out differently on the front and the back. So I got to looking at the piece of railing that came out of it. it actually cut down to this uh, insert line for the drawer bottoms. They cut that down so they could have it even and flush. So I'm going to do the same thing rather than notch this out to fit over that top piece. I'm going to emulate that on the front here. Make it look nice and clean and honor some of that uh, original craftsmanship. So if you look at it, had the original piece right here, yeah, about maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so was left on the rail right there. I emulated that right here. So let's see how that shakes out. All right. So you guys seen the cuts that were made? I'll gently tap that in. You can see how the back here lines up. We'll nail through the bottom for a little bit more stability and then it still maintains that original look. Look at the front here. Yeah, that's where that original brass hardware that we removed is gonna go. My husband likes to measure not once, not twice, but three times a lady. Do you guys recognize this song? Do you and your family play song association too? If so, please leave a comment down below. Just one thing to always keep in mind, uh, you see a lot of people using masking tape or painter's tape on the wood, and that's to avoid, especially with plywood, but any wood for that matter, it really helps minimize the splitting when you're cutting. A good blade helps with that, but also that tape will help keep it from uh, splitting out. Keep it clean on the back side as well. If you are loving my content, please subscribe to the channel. I would love to have you here. So we got, you see how we laid the inside of the doors, tack that in, make sure your bottom gets back on there for stability. So we're gonna... So the next thing we're going to need to do here, you guys saw us cut the drawers up. Going to have to make the cutaway in the existing base right here. So to do that, you're going to have to pull this strip out to ready back the screws out right here. A couple of nails holding it in. We'll get that out. Don't want to damage anything. I'm going to use some of this wood right here and this right here to build up a new track. 
for the drawers just to give it some additional support right here since we did cut this middle section out just to keep them coming out smooth but uh you can see that this has had some moisture over the years so this will probably get replaced with some new uh what is that like eighth inch plywood but anyways you can see right here i used the drawer so you put your drawer in and i traced that spot we made the cutout in the drawer so we can make a nice clean cut out here and then on this upper part the only thing i really plan to cut out is the access area uh, for the drain so you can get to that plumbing if needed the rest of it will just feed through the back there's no need to make any extra cuts there so we'll uh we'll see how that goes all right so using my circular saw just because it's a little bit easier uh, on these cuts right here. So I'm just, just going to cut back, cut back, and then plunge cut in the front. So to do most of my projects that I've done in the past, I've always used uh, pocket holes and a Craig tool. It's not sponsored by Craig. Oh, we'll be great if it was. Uh, but no, we've got one of the OG ones. It's just uh, somewhere in storage, and I do not feel like spending a day trying to find it. So uh, got the latest and greatest. We'll see how this thing works out. It's supposed to auto adjust uh, to the lumber you're working on, which which will be nice, uh, assuming all that works out well. They make some great stuff, so we'll see how it goes. So we've got this little auto max adjustment here on the Craig. Just eyeballing this. Yeah, look at that. It senses the size of the lumber, then latches down. That is pretty dang on dope. So this is a little bit different right here. It's got a little uh, depth gauge, if you will, for your lumber. So you measure right there. It's within that three-quarter range right there. So you take your drill, which they now have conveniently marked. The old one I had had a little depth set on the tool you adjusted it to. So you just set that to three-quarters. It matches up to the depth of your lumber. Tighten that, tighten that thing up on there. And then uh, commence to drilling. Some form of tape, masking tape's great, uh, painter's tape's great. Something that's not going to damage the surface of the wood, especially when you're cutting plywood, just because it it does tend to splinter. Go ahead and make some little cuts here. So one of my favorite tools, and it doesn't have to be this brand, but an oscillating tool to help make way a lot of these old nails that are in there without damaging or prying on the wood. Boom, right through that nail.
my husband is getting ready to apply the plywood to the back of the dresser. This helps to support the new structure and it also allows the contractor to anchor the piece to the wall. We decided to leave the back of it off since you cannot see what is behind the drawers after opening it. Plus, it will be a breeze to anchor it later during the installation process. Here's what the before looks like. Here is the after. Our new vanity for our powder room is so classy. I cannot wait for it to get installed when the time comes. There is still more work that needs to get done. My husband will use a whole saw to cut the drain access in the center support. I will slightly sand the top, apply a sealer in order to protect the wood, and purchase a glass top to make this project complete. If you want to see the full look, stay tuned in, and I will definitely share in a later video. I hope you guys enjoyed my special guest. He did a wonderful job explaining his plan. If you love having him on my channel like I did and want to see more of his work, please let me know. Also check out the blog at toshkinhouse.com for additional details. Like, comment, and share this video. I thank you all for tuning in. I thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys next time.